Uh, this is part two of the first lecture on clustering classification and machine learning algorithms. And uh, what I want to do now is we're going to switch over to MATLAB. And what we're going to learn to do is program some of the ideas behind this k-means algorithm. The k-means algorithm is uh, it's like one of the most important algorithms uh, in, in sort of the unsupervised uh, learning literature. So uh, it's simple. And that's one of its primary benefits. Very easy to program. It's very fast. And uh, you know, for the most part, it's the workhorse of unsupervised learning. Unsupervised learning, as I mentioned, is a little bit tricky because what the unsupervised learning algorithm tries to do is uh, tries to actually find clusters for you without any previous information about if there actually are even clusters to be found or how many there are to be found. So uh, typically, when you think about a workhorse in this space, it's important to start thinking about uh, that kind of idea. So what I want to do is I want to think about uh, manufacturing some data. And what I'm going to do is generate two types of data. I'm going to generate, let's call it data set one, data set two. What they're going to be are some Gaussian distributed random variables. And we're going to look at these things. I'm going to see that, oh, look, I have two clusters. And the question is, how well does the k-means back that out for us in some kind of principled way algorithmically? It's a toy problem. But the idea is to illustrate the concept, maybe write a little code for this so that we can play around with this. Okay? So let's go ahead and build this thing out. So I'm going to switch over to MATLAB. And uh, when we switch over to MATLAB, here it is. We've got a programming box here. And there is actually a k-means algorithm in MATLAB. And I'll show it to you at the end of this thing. But the first thing I want to do is illustrate the process of how k-means works. Okay? And we'll do this by first constructing some data. So what I'm first going to do is make up some random variables. And the random variables are going to be Gaussian distributed so that I can uh, make use of this. So I'm going to say x is equal to rand. Uh, I'm going to make randomly distributed random variables. What I'm going to do there okay, is make this randomly distributed va random variable. This, what this rand n does is it makes basically a Gaussian distributed random variable with mean 0 and unit variance. And I have 240 points. It's going to be lined up into a vector of 240 rows, one column. Okay? So those are what's called my x values that I want to look at. And my y values are going to be similar, but I'm going to make it a little bit uh, narrower in the y direction. Okay? And what I can do with this is just say plot x versus y. And let's make these with uh, black squares uh, line width 2, because it makes it a nice little thicker for us. Okay, So let me pop this out, run this code, and there they are. Okay, So what this figure shows us right, is here's my distribution of points, randomly generated. Now, you can't quite see it here, but on the x-axis, this goes from negative 4 to 4, whereas on the y-axis, it goes negative 1.5 to 1.5. So if we had a fixed axis, which I'll show you in a minute, it would look sort of like an elliptical distribution of points. But because the axes are squished, it looks like it's just some random distribution in there. So I have 240 points. That's my first random set of variables. <clears throat> Let's make a second set. So part of what we're going to do is we're going to say, suppose this x and y come from some kind of data. These are cats. And then we'll have x2, y2, which let's say are dogs. And they're going to have some distribution. So let's make these two variables. And then we'll, our job is to try to separate them. OK. So here we go. We're going to make two more variables. And uh, what I can do with this is copy that. Oh. All right, there we go. Not too bad of a mess up. OK. So let's call these x2 and y2. And I don't want to make the same distribution. What I'm going to do is center this one here over around 1 or negative 1. Uh, and I'll make this like some other ellipse. And it'll be centered around minus 1. So I can run this. And now what we want to do is do a hold on to this plot. Plot x2, y2. Let's make this red. And uh, I'm 
Okay, so now I'm going to have two sets of data, and there they are. Okay, so now this is, this is kind of the data set we're going to start to play with, okay? So you have the red dots down here, you have the black dots up there. And so part of what we want to do is to think about how to separate those out. Now, in this case here, it's very close to the example I showed previously, which is, you know, the, most of the black are up here, most of the red down here, but there is certainly mixing in here. If I wanted to get a better separation, uh, notice what I can do. I can just say, okay, I'm going to make the uh, y variable now, uh, let's go minus 2. And you'll see when I run this, I think I run it. Okay. What's it complaining about? All right. Oh, uh, let's say, have it pop up to the form. Sorry. Figure one. Let's have it pop out every time. Boom. There we go. Oh, and you know what? Uh, it's plotting over the old data, so we have to do a clear all, close all, clear screen. Boom. Okay, there we go. That's more like it. So if I separate the data further, notice here the black and the red are very well separated. And in fact, with your naked eye, you already can see what we want to do is draw the line right here, right? If I want to draw a line, a classification line with this algorithm, I'd, I don't know, something like this. Probably a little bit further up. <laughs> Easy to fix. I just can go down a little bit there. All right. So something like this might actually work quite nicely. You have very well separated data. So this one's easy. But notice there is still a mistake even here. See that black dot right there? There is some probability, right, that this thing will sit far away from where this cluster sits down here. Now, I want to walk through you with you through what the k-means algorithm does. It's very simple. What you get to do with the algorithm is pick the number of clusters you want this algorithm to look for. That k is typically that number. So in other words, k means you're looking for k clustering means. Okay? So in this case, we're going to try for two means, right? Two, two clusters. So what the algorithm does, it just says, okay, fine. What I'll do is I will pick uh, two initial spots for where the means are. Okay? So in this data here, I'm going to blow this up just so we can look at it more carefully. And I could just pick two random points. Let's say here with a star and over here with a plus. These, of course, are wrong. The clusters aren't even near those points. But here's what the algorithm does. It just says, OK, everybody who is closest to this point right here, closest meaning just what's the distance to each point, belongs to the star. Everybody who's closest to that point over there belongs to the plus. So in some sense, there would be sort of this line that would run down like this. And it would say, these points belong to this one. These points belong to this one. <clears throat> That's the first step of the iteration algorithm, is that separation. So now I'm going to label all these points to here, all those points to there. And then what the k-means does, it says, OK, everybody who belongs to this cluster over here, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to look to see where is the center of mass of all these points. So iteration one is to guess. Iteration two is to say, where is the center of mass of all these points? Well, you know, it might be if you have this weight plus these up here, you know, maybe it's, maybe this is your new point. Okay? What about this one here? Now again, weighting it according to here. No one looks, you've got a big back end over here, so maybe, I don't know, let's make something up. I'm just making this up, I'm just eyeballing it. Because you have a big mass of black points here, less red here, but big red down here, so I'm doing that. So all of a sudden now, iteration one started here with some guesses. Now you're here at the next iteration. So these are your new points. And so in fact, I'm going to erase my old points. They're gone. And I can start with these two new points now. Let's repeat the algorithm. Whoever is closest to this point belongs to this point. Whoever's closest to this point belongs to that point. So I might draw a line, something like this. The algorithm now says, great, all the points belonging to 
this star, I'm going to now find the center of mass of all the points, which might be somewhere like, I don't know, let's just draw that. So this goes to that point. How about this one? Find the center of mass of all these points. Well, you get this big weighting down here with the red, so I'll put this. So this goes down to there. Okay? You have some new points now. In fact, I'm going to erase the old ones, take them away, as well as take away the old decision lines. So here's my new points. I repeat the process yet again. And now, you can see I have these points in here and here, so my splitting might look something like this. All the points above here belong to the star, all the points down here belong to the cross. I now look at what's the center of mass here, and this thing might move slightly. It's actually not in a bad position now, but maybe, maybe its center of mass is here. Whereas this guy moves to its center of mass, and maybe that center of mass is, I don't know, not too far away from it was. And what ends up happening, you notice, this is after three iterations, what's going to happen is these things are going to converge. So what k-means does is you sit, sit there with an iteration, you just give it some guesses for the number of clusters. Okay, I, if you say two clusters, I'm going to give you two guesses. And what it's going to sit there and do is just sit there and work on those two guesses and figure out, like, whoever's closest to this one belongs to this one. Whoever's closest to this one belongs to this one. Okay, and then once you find all the points belonging to this guy, you find the center of mass of all those points, that's your new point. Find the center of mass of all these points, new point. Then do the same algorithm. Find who's closest to who, you just iterate this process, and when it starts to converge, you actually have your two clusters. And in fact, in this case here, basically the k-means would reproduce what we have here, which is your naked eye best separation between these points and these points down here. So that's the whole k-means algorithm. It's really simple, right, in some ways, because all you have to think about doing is from any point, you know, if this was my guess out here, let's say, all I got to do is calculate distances to my points. Oops, I didn't draw that in a straight line, but uh, from here down to here and here down to here, right? These are just distances. All you got to do is say, well, that distance is, you know, if this is, uh, it's the difference, the delta x squared plus delta y squared, square root. It's Pythagorean distance, which is easy to calculate. So you go through for every point, associate it with the nearest point, kind of trivial, okay? So that's how k-means works. Now let's take these two data sets. We could certainly write an algorithm to do this ourselves. Alternatively, we can basically tap into the power of MATLAB, and the power of MATLAB has k-means built in. And so we're going to go ahead and look at what the k-means algorithm looks like. So let me close this thing down, and we'll bring it up here. And you can say, help, oops, help k-means. Okay? Now, when you do this, let me make this bigger now. Oop. Sorry, let me bring this over here. I'm going to really make this much wider. K-means, oop. All right. All right. I will uh, fix this up. Uh, this is not currently on this computer, but we'll fix it up here in a moment. It does not have the statistics toolbox loaded. But let me tell you basically the program structure of what it would do. So the k-means command is as simple as basically uh, putting in all your data. So for instance, if I was going to put all this data in, I might make my data for the input, let's call it x total. And the x total, right, is going to be uh, my x variables stacked on top of my x2 variables. And my y total is going to be my y variable stepped on y2. So I know there's two clusters, so this is a little bit fake, but I put them all together. All the x, all the y. 
So the real data, then h point of that data is represented by two pieces, the x and the y values. So let me put this in as my data is equal to basically my x values and my y values. So what is this? Well, what this thing here is, is now each row of this vector data is a point. It's one of those points, the black or white points. It has an x value and a y value. So it's a two-column point. It may be that your data is not two-dimensional. could be ten-dimensional, in which case each row would have ten values. Or you might have a thousand-dimensional space, which would mean each row would have a thousand points. Okay? But each row is an individual point okay? or a piece of data. So like, here's this point, here's this point, here's this point row by row, I'm going to have a total of 480 of them right here. Okay? What I'd really want to do is I'd actually want to maybe take 200 points from each one, and then I could cross-validate with the remaining 80 points. Okay? But for now, I'm just going to say this is my data. The k-means algorithm basically works the following. Uh, Simple as that. K means throw your data in, and you see that too. That's the number of clusters you're going to look for. Okay? So what will happen now is you throw in your data, the x total, the y total, and you give it a number of clusters to look for. And what K means does is just exactly that algorithm I illustrated on the board. It will go, it will go systematically through your data, okay, and will pick two random, actually there are some smart ways to make your initial guesses. It will pick two initial guesses and simply iterate and update those center of masses until they converge. And when they converge, you're going to get this variable out. And out will have, for instance, binary data, one or a two. So associated with every row will come out as a one or a two. If it's a one, that means it's part of cluster 1. If it's a 2, it's part of cluster 2. So it's going to basically label every single row of your data as either a 1 or a 2 because that's the number of clusters you've told it to do. So this is very simple. And then what you could do is say, well, let me collect all the out data that is labeled a 1 that belongs to this certain class. So that's kind of my, my data now associated with cluster 1. Everything that comes out labeled a 2, all the rows that come out labeled a 2 are now in that cluster. And so now you've just basically done this clustering algorithm very fast. And again, I'm going to remind you, the most important piece of this and the hardest piece is getting the number of clusters correctly. Okay? In, in, in many cases, you might have some idea of what to pick there. But in a lot of cases where you're really looking for data structures and data mining it, picking the K is, is often sort of uh, the, the, the art of the deal to making this thing work. Okay, that's it for k-means at this point. And we're going to continue with the next piece, which is going to be supervised learning using one of the simplest algorithms, which is uh, k-nearest neighbor search.